Hey everyone, it's Jared here, and today I'm going to share a video with you that's an excerpt from one of our Drumio courses. Now, our Drumio courses are a new way to learn. It's a new way that we teach on Drumio through structured learning in a way that you can track your progress and measure your results. And so, the course I'm going to share with you today is on this page. So, this is the course on eighth notes, and you see below the video, you can mark as complete, favorite, and then you can view your progress. Now, right below that, you can actually within this line just play all these beats. But I don't want to get too much into that. I basically just wanted to share this lesson with you. Just so you could check it out. Mike McCalco is the instructor, amazing instructor, and it's a perfect lesson for beginners just to really learn some eighth note beats that sound great when played along with real music. So go ahead, watch the lesson, and I'll see you again very soon. Hey, it's Mike here with another Drumio course for you guys. This is on eighth note beats. So now that you understand how to count eighth notes and how to feel eighth notes, it's time to now put these into a musical application and play some drum beats. Now, each one of these is a little bit different, but they are going to imply that eighth note pulse throughout the beat. So they're really super cool. A couple of uh, pretty simple ones, then they get a little more challenging as, uh, as we move down the sheet. So with the very first one, Number one, you've simply got eighth notes on the hi-hat. One, and two, and three, and four, and... But you'll notice at the end of that beat, there's a circled X, which means we're going to open the hi-hat. So, just a little bit of a color we're going to add to that. So once you've got that down, now we're going to add the snare drum to counts two and four. One and two and three and four and... So that may sound familiar to some of you folks because it's like, wow, it sounds like music. It sounds like a song. So we're definitely getting into the realm of starting to play some music with our friends or jamming along to our favorite song. Okay, so we're going to add the bass drum to counts one and also to the three and the end of three. Okay, so now the bass drum, I'll just play the bass drum by itself. One and two and three and four and... So before putting it all together, okay, I'm going to play the bass drum and the snare for some of you that maybe aren't as quick learners as some other people, okay? Here's bass drum and snare. One and two and three and four and... Here's the whole thing. And two and three and four and so that's a pretty cool drum beat. Sounds like something. I've played that beat millions of times and I've made money playing that beat. So hopefully when you learn that beat, you can join a band and make millions of dollars. Anyways, let me uh, demonstrate this for you at 60 beats per minute and at 90 beats per minute. Number two is kind of cool. Takes me back to the 1970s, even though I was just a child then. Uh, the disco era. Don't run away. Don't turn your computers off, okay? Um, the hi-hat's going to be on the ands, okay? But the open hi-hat is going to be on the ands. We're going to play the bass drum on quarter notes, okay? So we have that nice pulse going underneath of just straight quarter notes on the bass drum. The snare drum's going to be on two and four. 
and the open hi-hat is going to be on all of the ends. So right off the bat, what you want to practice if you haven't done this before, is just practice opening your hi-hat on all the ends. One and, two and, three and, four and. Some of you might notice on the sheet music, there's these little X's beneath each of the bass drum. That's just showing that that's where I'm closing it. Even though I'm not thinking about that X, it's just what's happening in the left foot. So don't be too alarmed at, oh, what else do I have to do? It's already happening. Because to open the hi-hat, you gotta lift your foot. To close the hi-hat, you gotta step down. So that's why that X is appearing there. So one way that I kind of get my students learning this one at home is I say, let's start off with the feet. Because if the feet are playing at the exact same time, I'm just going, So what I'm going to do now is add the snare drum to two and four, which means that everything is coming down at the exact same time. Both feet and the snare drum hand is coming down on counts two and four. One and two and three and four and... So what I have to add to that now is the offset or offbeat hi-hat. One and two and three and four. And the trick is, just play this. So it may seem a little tricky at first, take your time with this one, it's super cool and you'll get all the disco and techno gigs you ever could possibly imagine, or it's just kind of fun to add once in a while into your everyday playing. It gets that left foot working too, something that uh, a lot of drummers don't do enough of I find. So let's get the left foot working for us as well. So that's number two. Let me demonstrate this for you at 60 and at 90 beats per minute. So number three is pretty cool. I like these kind of beats a lot because it gives me a chance to mix up the sound of my ride cymbal a little bit. So it's not just one, sort of a one-dimensional sound, ding, 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 ding. I mean, that's great, but once in a while, we want to mix it up a bit. And what's happening in number three is we're actually going to mix up the sound of the ride cymbal a little bit. So as opposed to having that one-dimensional sound, which is not a bad thing, but once in a while, we want to mix it up. And what I mean one-dimensional sound, I mean this. Like, I mean, that's awesome, it's great, you Just but once in a while we want to change it up a little bit. So what ends up happening is we're going to play the ride cymbal surface, and then we're going to go over to the bell, okay, on the and. So it'll be like one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. So now there's a little bit of target practice involved here, because I need to now see where I'm hitting uh, the cymbal each time, so I can't get too crazy with the other... Uh, with the other limbs, because I've got to make sure this is very consistent, otherwise it's going to sound kind of weird and off. So here's how this would sound, just the ride cymbal. One, and two, and three, and four, and... The snare drum is now getting a little fancier in number three. We're kind of just getting away from two and four, and we're going to play two and on the snare, and also count four. So if I incorporate those two ideas together, there's a little bit more thinking going on here. So uh, watch what happens in this one. One and two and three and four and... So 
So you can see there's a little bit more challenge there, but like I've said before, challenge makes you better, right? So we try that one. Now, the bass drums in number three, they're fairly straight ahead. It's just one, two, and three, and four, and bass, 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 one, and two, and three, and, sounds like this. Here's just the bass drum. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So now let's try that with just the bass drum and the snare, okay? Because I just want to make sure you guys get the grasp on this before we add this guy. So you may want to practice that a little bit before we add this, but let's add this and let's see what happens, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, with the ride, get him comfortable, then I'm going to bring in the bass drum and the snare drum. One and two and three and four and. So now I'll demonstrate this for you at 60 beats per minute and 90. In number four, we've got something a little bit different than what we've done in the previous exercises because we are now incorporating some toms, ride cymbal on the offbeats, but still trying to keep everything consistent with the snare drum being on two and four. So that kind of keeps everything glued together real nice. But this is a really, really nice idea. So there's sort of a theme to this. And when I say a theme, there's this reoccurring thing that happens. And what I'm noticing is that we're going to play small tom, floor tom, and bass drum in unison. And we end up doing that four times in this exercise. It happens on the one and and on the and three. So lots of eighth notes. So if I was just to count and play that little theme, small tom, floor tom, and bass drum, it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and four. So that in itself is kind of cool. That could be used for a section of a song. You never know, right? Now we have to add the snare drum to two and four while we're doing that. So we're going to have to interrupt the theme when we go from the small tom back to the snare and then play it again on four. We'll add the ride cymbal last. So I would definitely start with that before we add the ride symbol, because what's happening with the ride is we're going to play the ride on the end of three and on the end of four. So let me just show you what's happening at the end of this measure so you kind of get the concept. So it'd be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. If I add the snare drum, one and two and three and four and. So you're going to have this ride, snare ride thing going on. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so let's try to put this whole thing together, see what happens. So this is a cool one. Ready? Here we go. So now let me demonstrate that for you at 60 and at 90 beats per minute. Have fun with this one.
Now, I really like number five because number five has a really cool vibe to it. I've heard these kind of beats played for decades and decades, and uh, I think you'll have some fun with these because what's happening is we're taking the snare drum note away from two and four and moving it around a little bit, okay? So the nice part about this one is the ride cymbal is just playing straight eighth notes, okay, all the way through, but there's now a pattern between the bass drum and the snare, and it's on every single eighth note. So what we've got is we've got bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, and the reason I'm saying it like that is because a lot of my younger students, like talking six years old and seven years old, have a hard time counting and grasping the counting concept. So I would suggest doing both. And if you can count, that's awesome. But if counting is a tricky thing for you, then definitely try this concept that I'm talking about. Bass, snare, bass, bass, snare, bass, bass, snare. So if we are counting it, snare drum is on the and of one, on the three, and on the and of four. So... Hopefully that hasn't blown your mind too badly. But uh, let me just show you the bass drum and the snare part, and then adding the ride is pretty simple, okay? Here we go. One and two and three and four and... Now I want to add the ride symbol, straight eighth notes playing on top of that. It's pretty simple. Here we go. One and two and three and four and... So now I will demonstrate this for you at 60 beats per minute and at 90 beats per minute. So thanks for hanging out with me on this eighth note beat section. I had a lot of fun. These are pretty cool. Definitely going to change the game for you and your drumming. But make sure when you practice these, do them slow. Practice them at 60 beats per minute along with the way I was playing them before we move on to the next section, which is eighth note fills. I'll see you there. <laughs>